Imagine waking up in a hotel room. You look out the window, and instead of a cityscape, you see the curvature of Earth below. But I won't drag it out. Let's jump right in. The rise of space tourism. By 2050, space tourism isn't just for billionaires anymore. Companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin have made it possible for middle-class families to save up for a trip to low Earth orbit. Orbital hotels are the new vacation hotspots. These massive structures can house hundreds of guests, offering zero-gravity spa treatments and restaurants with Earthview dining. But the real thrill, spacewalks. Imagine floating outside, tethered to the hotel, as you take in the breathtaking view of our blue planet. The journey to these orbital resorts starts with a smooth ride on a space elevator. That's right, the dream of a cable stretching from Earth to space has become a reality. Made possible by advances in material science, particularly the development of carbon nanotubes, these elevators have revolutionized access to space. No more bone-rattling rocket launches. Just step into a capsule and enjoy the ride as you're whisked up to orbit. But for those seeking more adventure, there's always the moon. Lunar bases, once the stuff of sci-fi dreams, are now reality. Weekend trips to the moon are expensive but doable. Visitors can explore lunar caves, ride in low-gravity rovers, and even play lunar golf. The moon has also become a launch pad for deeper space missions. Its low gravity and lack of atmosphere make it an ideal place to build and launch spacecraft. The far side of the moon hosts massive radio telescopes, shielded from Earth's electromagnetic noise, peering into the depths of the universe. Mars, the new frontier. While moon trips are becoming common, Mars is the new frontier. By 2050, we've established the first permanent human settlement on the Red Planet. It's not a vacation spot yet, but it's home to a growing community of scientists, engineers, and pioneers. The journey to Mars has been revolutionized by new propulsion technologies. Nuclear thermal propulsion has cut travel time from nine months to just three. This not only makes the trip more bearable for astronauts, but also reduces their exposure to cosmic radiation. But even with faster travel, the psychological challenges of long-duration spaceflight are significant. To combat this, spacecraft now include virtual reality suites that can simulate Earth environments with stunning realism. Astronauts can take a virtual walk in a forest or have a beach day, helping to stave off the isolation of deep space. Life on Mars is tough but exciting. The settlement is a mix of underground habitats and surface domes. Colonists are working on terraforming projects, trying to make the Martian atmosphere more Earth-like. It's a century-long project, but by 2050, they've already made progress. One of the biggest challenges, food. While supplies from Earth are still crucial, Martian greenhouses are producing crops adapted to the planet's unique conditions. Martian potatoes, anyone? But it's not just about growing Earth plants in Martian soil. Scientists have started experimenting with genetically engineered plants designed specifically for Mars, capable of thriving in the planet's harsh environment and producing higher yields of nutrients essential for human survival. Water, too, is a critical resource. Massive machines extract water from the Martian polar ice caps and subsurface deposits. This water isn't just for drinking and agriculture. It's also split into hydrogen and oxygen for fuel and breathable air. The Martian colony isn't just about survival, though. It's a hotbed of scientific research. Geologists study the planet's history, uncovering secrets about planetary formation. Biologists search for signs of past or present microbial life. And physicists take advantage of Mars' unique conditions to conduct experiments that would be impossible on Earth deep space exploration. But humanity's reach extends beyond Mars. Robotic missions to the moons of Jupiter and Saturn have paved the way for human exploration. By 2050, we're planning the first crewed mission to Europa, Jupiter's icy moon. The spacecraft for these deep space missions are like nothing we've seen before. They're massive, assembled in orbit, and equipped with artificial gravity systems for long duration flights. Some even use antimatter propulsion a technology that was purely theoretical back in the 2020s. These missions aren't just about exploration, they're about resources. Asteroid mining has become a trillion dollar industry. Robotic spacecraft extract precious metals and rare earth elements, sending them back to earth or using them for in-space manufacturing. The asteroid belt, once seen as a barrier to outer planet exploration, has become a cosmic pit stop. Mining outposts on large asteroids like Ceres serve as refueling stations for deep space missions. They provide water for fuel and life support, dramatically extending the range of our exploratory efforts. But it's not all smooth sailing. The challenges of deep space exploration are immense. Radiation remains a constant threat, 
mitigated by advanced shielding technologies and medical treatments that repair radiation damage at the cellular level. Communication delays of hours or even days require spacecraft and their crews to be more autonomous than ever before. Despite these challenges, the allure of the unknown drives us forward. Missions are already being planned to the Keeper Belt and beyond, pushing the boundaries of our solar neighborhood, the AI revolution in space. None of this would be possible without AI. Artificial intelligence has become the backbone of space exploration. AI systems manage life support on spacecraft and space stations, predict solar flares and other space weather events, and even pilot spacecraft on complex maneuvers. But the most exciting development, AI human hybrid astronauts. These are humans with neural implants that allow them to interface directly with their spacecraft and spacesuits. They can control systems with thoughts and process vast amounts of data in real time. It's a controversial technology, but it's proving invaluable for deep space missions. On Mars and beyond, swarms of AI-controlled robots are preparing sites for human habitation. They're building structures, extracting water from the soil, and setting up power systems, all before the first human sets foot on the surface. AI isn't just assisting humans, it's actively making discoveries on its own. Automated probes exploring the subsurface oceans of icy moons use advanced algorithms to identify potential biosignatures. On Mars, AI-driven rovers have the autonomy to investigate interesting geological features without waiting for instructions from Earth. In space stations and colonies, AI manages complex ecosystems that recycle air, water, and waste with unprecedented efficiency. These closed-loop life support systems, far more advanced than anything we had in the 2020s, are key to long-term survival in space. But AI in space isn't without its challenges. The harsh radiation environment can cause glitches and errors in traditional computing systems. To combat this, researchers have developed quantum computers that are not only more powerful, but also more resistant to radiation-induced errors. As AI systems become more advanced, ethical questions arise. How much autonomy should we give to a spacecraft on a decades-long mission? What happens if an AI makes a discovery it deems too sensitive to share with its human creators? These are questions that scientists, philosophers, and policymakers grapple with as we push further into the cosmos, the search for life. With all this technology and exploration, one question remains at the forefront. Are we alone? By 2050, we're closer than ever to answering this question. Probes on Europa and Enceladus are drilling through the ice exploring subsurface oceans for signs of microbial life. These missions use sophisticated labs on a chip to analyze water samples at a molecular level, looking for the chemical signatures of life as we know it, and perhaps as we don't. On Mars, new instruments are analyzing soil samples at a molecular level, looking for the chemical signatures of past or present life. But the search isn't limited to simple microbes. Some scientists speculate that life on Mars, if it exists, might have retreated underground as the planet's surface became inhospitable. Deep drilling missions are underway to explore vast networks of subsurface caves and aquifers. But the search goes beyond our solar system. Next-generation space telescopes, far more powerful than the James Webb, are analyzing the atmospheres of Earth-like planets around other stars. They're looking for biosignatures, chemicals that could indicate the presence of life. These telescopes don't just detect planets, they map them. Using advanced interferometry techniques, we can now create rough maps of the surfaces of exoplanets, identifying continents, oceans, and even large-scale weather patterns. And then there's SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. By 2050, we've set up radio telescope arrays on the far side of the moon, free from Earth's radio interference. They're listening to the cosmos, hoping to catch a signal that would change everything. But SETI isn't just passive listening anymore. Debate rages over whether we should be actively sending out messages to potential alien civilizations. Some argue it's our duty to announce our presence to the cosmos. Others warn that attracting the attention of more advanced civilizations could be dangerous. The discovery of simple microbial life, while groundbreaking, wouldn't necessarily answer our deeper questions about the prevalence of intelligent life in the universe. That's why astrobiologists are developing new frameworks for identifying signs of technology and intelligence at interstellar distances. Could the waste heat from a distant civilization be detectable? What about the effects of large-scale engineering projects on a planet's atmosphere? As we search, we're also preparing for contact. 
Protocols are in place for how to respond if we do detect signs of intelligent life. But there's a growing realization that alien life, if we find it, may be so different from our own that communication, or even mutual recognition, could be a tremendous challenge. As we stand on the brink of this new space age, one thing is clear. The next few decades will redefine humanity's place in the cosmos. From lunar vacations to Martian colonies, from AI astronauts to the hunt for alien life, we're entering an era of exploration unlike anything in history. The question isn't whether we'll become a spacefaring civilization, but how far we'll go.